Now, moving on, passengers on some of the country's busiest commuter rail routes await chaos today as train drivers go on strike as part of a long-running pay dispute. Well, our correspondent Nick Ellaby joins us now from Waterloo Station in central London. Nick, what impact is this having on commuters this morning? Yeah, good morning, Nicola. Morning, David. Huge impact on commuters. Today, day three of this round, latest round of strikes by drivers of the Aslef Union in England. Today, affecting commuters on busy routes in the southeast of England, south of England, East Anglia. Friday and Saturday, we had the north, the west country, and the Midlands affected. Uh, lots of people I've spoken to pretty cheesed off, but also quite a lot of support still for the train drivers. Lots of people going through tough times at the moment. And I think anyone seeing a group of workers asking for more pay, there is certainly a strong amount of support for the drivers. Uh, but huge effect to these busy commuter routes around London today and also into tomorrow with those overtime bans as well that are supposed to maximise disruption for the networks. I've been speaking to the commuters at Waterloo Station this morning, asking them, how long can you put up with these strikes for? Here's what they told me. I think loads of people are working at home now, so I think this could go on forever at the rate things are going. It's, yeah, they're getting how much a year? It's, it's very difficult to say how much more they could want, really. These train strikes for? Um, until the government pays them properly, basically. Are you, are you happy to support them for as long as it takes? I think so, because it's about safety and stuff and their work environment, so I think they've got to do what they need to do until they get noticed, you know? It obviously causes disruption trying to commute in today. I've got an important meeting to sort of run this afternoon, so, you know, it drives a bit of concern and obviously it drives you towards looking at kind of why they're, why they're striking, but times are hard for everyone, I think, aren't they? So, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's difficult. These train driver strikes have been going on for two years now. To find out more about what's happening and when they might be resolved, I've got the General Secretary of the Aslef Union, Mick Whelan. Morning, Mick. Thanks for joining us. First of all, you know, passengers on the rail network are down 30% since COVID. At this stage, these strikes are just hurting your industry, aren't they? Well, actually, the figures aren't quite that down, are they? We see that... Uh, 110% uh, of footfalls back at weekends and 90% during the week. We see the tube returning. We see revenue coming back. So actually, there is a change. Uh, so we do believe that there is an opportunity. But for us, the reality is that the people behind me who don't want to be here losing money haven't had a pay rise for five years. And all we expect, like every other work in the country, is some dent in the cost of living. OK. And, you know, we, we're, we're told that the Aslef Union haven't spoken to any of the groups that could resolve this situation. You've got the RDG, you've got the Rail Minister, you've got the Transport Secretary. It's over a year since you've spoken to these people. Who's, whose job is it to say, look, time to sit down and talk? Well, I believe it's the employers. We're not in dispute with the government. The government might be pulling the strings. But we've done 17 pay deals the last 12 months. Freight. Scotland, Wales, Open Access, Mersey Rail, Eurostar, Tube, Elizabeth Line. None of them made the demands that are being made here, which are irrational and unreasonable to give up all our terms and conditions for a massive pay cut. It's so, not just about the money, is it? Can you explain a bit more about your sticking points? Our sticking points are they want to rip up every agreement we've ever made and got uh, to keep the privateers making their profits. Bear in mind, all the companies that we're talking about are actually making hundreds of millions of pounds in profits, declaring about the money that they're getting free from the government and paying dividends to, to their shareholders. Tell me then why the people who work for them shouldn't have a pay rise. So, Mick, you're sitting here with your arms folded, the government and the RDG as well doing the same thing. This isn't, this, how long can this go on for? Well, while the people behind me are returning mandates of 95 to 99 per cent in favour of strike action and action short of strike, we'll keep articulating their voice. They'll tell us when they've had enough. They'll tell us when they don't want to do any more. But they're in it for the long haul. Are we just waiting for the new government at this stage? Not really. I mean, I haven't discussed this with the Labour Party or anybody else. Our dispute is with the employers we currently work for. No matter who's in power, our dispute will still be with those employers. We'd hope there'd be more pressure to resolve it from a new government. But at this moment in time, we've got a government who doesn't care and it's openly doesn't like railways. OK, Mick, thanks very much. I mean, the government do say there is a credible offer on the table that hasn't been accepted. Uh, and the RDG seems to say they are keeping channels of communication open. But at the moment, everybody's sitting around with their arms folded. And I expect more train strikes to come this year as well, guys.